So a lot of people believe that 82 games is just way more than enough. Let's see what Richard Jefferson has to say, because trust me, a lot of people heard it. Absolutely, and that seems to be what they're moving towards, is maybe just 15, top 15 oh guys in the NBA. We'll see if the changes are made. I do want to get to, though, another interesting part of Commissioner Silver's press conference, where he was asked about shortening the season, the possibility of that. Take a listen to what he had to say. I'm not against potentially changing the format of the season, even, me, even possibly shortening it a bit, if we can demonstrate that that's going to have a direct impact on injuries. And, for example, last season... Yo, the way he's talking, he, he has to be so specific with his wording because you know the, the tab boys are going to pick it apart, which they are right now. <laughs> we're, we played 10 fewer games and essentially had no impact. We want to make sure we have a system where our best players are incentivized to be on the floor. At the same time, we obviously don't want to see them injured. And so what we're hoping is we can all work collectively, the 30 teams together in a non-competitive way, together with our players association, and figure out what is optimal on these players' bodies so that they're incentivized to play but aren't overdoing it to the extent where they end up playing too much and, and pushing through injuries that, that ends up hurting their careers. Okay, so before the crew... You know what I'm saying? Gets into it. I would just like to point out his his argument that last season was shortened and it didn't really show any results in terms of helping with injuries is a flawed argument. And I ain't gonna lie for the head of the NBA, commissioner of the NBA. Come on, bro. L argument, bro. Come on. That's something I, that a fucking Twitter space would say, dog. That, that, that's like, that's the casual level of ignoring context. It was a fucking pandemic. They played in a goddamn bubble. 72 games for some teams. No more than 90 for most. Balled up. Had star players left and right getting hurt. I'm over here like, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Fuck Adam Silver. That's how I was feeling. Because I remember that shit was starting to piss me off, bro. People tried to argue that 2021 run was Mickey. Because half the damn league best player was hurt. No, bro. No. no. That, that's your demonstration. How the fuck are you going to demonstrate it? Going into the 2021 season, there was a shortened off season. So you had teams like the Heat and the Lakers who played a grueling series. We all know that Jimmy Butler picture. And then only had, what, like two months of rest? And then a whole season to play. Now, mind you, if you look at the teams that... uh made the conference finals in the bubble. So literally, aside from Denver, all of the other teams had very injury-riddled seasons and was bounced out in, like, the first round. And Denver couldn't keep that up for too long. Look what happened this year. Like, damn, bro. No, no. So... Yes and no. I just want to point out one thing before we get your... I know you're champing at the bit to talk about this, Richard, but... The season was and shortened last year to 72 it? games, but it was also compressed. Oh, that to say, correct. So to say that it was still there was a number of injuries. Right. Obviously, we're talking if we're talking October to June or October to April, 72 games versus December to April, 72 games could have a different effect. Yeah. What do you think of this, Rich? I think this is absurd. I think this is. Let me. Let me. Let me oh, I just okay. got to trash here. This. This is. This oh, is. Fuck. This is my issue right here. Right, is that. You have game readies. You have Norma Techs. There was years ago where players used to not travel. They would not travel uh, commercial. We have eliminated back-to-backs. We now have a, a week-long all-star break instead of instead of like three and a half days. That shit is and a I week. remember guys Dang. used to have to catch flights, Damn. play the last game on Thursday, <laughs> playing the game on Sunday, and then you would have a game on, on Tuesday, Wednesday. They have done every single thing. Every team now has sleep staffs. They have extra training staff. When I came into the league, you had two double that's, that's the video. That's manager. the video. That's them. That's them. That's them. That's them. Now you have a soft therapist <laughs> to travel with teams. About now, that. guys, are, you want to shorten the <laughs> season? <laughs> like, how much more do we have to make this coddling and all of this stuff go with the players? It makes absolutely no sense. Professional sports is not good on your body. It's supposed to separate the people that can do it from the people that can't do it. And while we mm. do want our best product on the floor, part of greatness is longevity. That's what Michael Jordan. That's what that's what Kareem Abdul Jabbar. That's what LeBron James, all of these guys, we talk about their greatness over a long period of time. And to keep eliminating this and dialing back to the point where it's like there's nothing else for the players to do. I think it is a joke. I think they should never do this. Now, if you were talking about the in-season tournament, I think that's 100% maybe if you wanted to just have a little bit more space. But this right here is the epitome of coddling players to make sure that everything is okay on top of the fact that players are taking rest days 
on top of the fact that they're mm. taking rest days right now. And Perk mm. saying, yeah, son. <laughs> Look at Perk over there. Talk to him. Talk to him, son. <laughs> okay, okay. I feel like that durability argument. I mean, yes, that that is why we look at LeBron and the Jordans and the Kareems of the world as to you know why they're so great. But also, I think the the point RJ is though like you want to give everyone a fair shot. There are things as freak injuries. The game is taxing on the body, but sometimes like there's you no know, genetics to have to do with the fact that people are just more more injured prone than others. Now you might say like you know shortening the season is is not going to change someone's genetics, but I think is you know the sentiment is giving everyone a fair shot. You don't want to have someone's legacy based off of injuries or not based off of injuries or whatever you want to spin it. You want it to be based off of their ability to play the game. That's you know that's what you want from everyone. We literally reacted to a video. Granted, very satire. That was um, asterisks on every championship. The goal at the end of the day is to lower the amount of asterisks, right? It's why some people love the Dirk championship. Some people love the LeBron 2013. Yeah, the 2013 chip. Like, it, it, it really comes down to, okay, how close were we to a perfect season, perfect health, which will never happen, but how close can we get to that point? So that's the goal. I honestly don't give a fuck. I'm going to just be blunt. I don't give a fuck what they talking about, though. I'm just happy RJ said it because a lot of times when you have um, people that aren't in the league say it, it does come off as being inhumane. It does come off as you're not thinking of these players as humans. Well, RJ's a champion. <laughs> like he may not been, he may have not been LeBron, but RJ's a champion. And for him to say that, Considering he's played the most amount of basketball games you can play. It's very interesting. That's, that's very that's very interesting. How are you going to give them rest days and then say, well, we're going to shorten it to 60 games. We're going to shorten it to 70 games. At the end of the day, they're still going to take time off. Tell them about the money. The they're money. Make oh, they're making <laughs> all that you. money. I don't I'm think sorry. anyone else is going to be These, are the, yeah, team, these are the teams. These are the owners need to get on these. It's not yeah, just the players. Don't, don't say the players. It's, it's literally, the, I've seen guys have a thumb injury and not be able to play in back-to-back -back because they didn't want their conditioning to be off, right? Like, if you have a thumb injury, you should be in conditioning. And I'm going to stop because I'm getting too excited here. But the fact that we <laughs> want to talk about shortening the season now with all of this stuff, you tore your ACL. I missed time before this. And it ain't just because of that. If guys aren't conditioning 24 hours a day to make sure that their bodies are taken care of, that's on them and that's on the team. But mm, period, poo. You... <laughs> no, 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 no. No, we're not doing this on this channel too, bro. Stop. He's emasculating Yo. me. He's a bot. He's a bot. He's a bot. Get him out this of here. He's a, crazy. He's a bot. Go He's off, a bot. Sis. He's a bot. Nope. No cap. You're disgusting. Uh, You're nasty. Shit. Go off, sis. Sage, let's talk about basketball. Come on, bro. Come on. Let's talk about basketball. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hoops, 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 hoops. Fuck, fuck, fuck. They clicked off already. Crazy. I feel like, though, like truly, the... The lowering from 82 to 72. I don't think it's going to help with injuries that much. Like, even even with everything I've said, I just think the way they explained it is, is flawed. But I don't think I don't think it's going to help with injuries that much. However, I feel like the main case for lowering the amount of games, and I've said this for years now, is the fact that there's just going to be more importance to every game. When you look at other leagues like the NFL, the reason why it's so appealing is the fact that there's 16, 17 weeks, 17 game seasons. And every single game counts. And that's just pure mathematics. The less games you have, the more each game uh, matters. So with the NBA, 82 games. I ain't gonna lie. The first, like, fourth of the season, you can't even say any takes because everyone's saying short sample size. So it's like... Well, all seasons are so sh short sample size. <laughs> like, that, like to keep, to keep, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sample size was the fucking word of the day. Now, to make another NFL analogy, I know, I know some of y'all are lost, but I'll make it very obvious for you. The NFL has, I believe, 18 weeks now. You only play your division rival twice. Imagine in the NBA, yo, if you want to see Giannis, you got one shot. Because the other time, he's in Milwaukee. You got one time to see Giannis. If you don't see Giannis, that's tough. And the NFL is even worse. Let's say I'm a Steelers fan and you're a diehard Brady fan. You got one out of four years that we going to play the Bucks. Otherwise, you got to wait. So if you want that ticket, you want to watch that game, you better watch that game. Because otherwise, you're not seeing it. If y'all don't understand what I'm saying about that, oh, I'll make it blunt. Y'all don't like basketball like y'all say y'all do. I, I don't like it like how mm. it's perceived. Bro, yeah. let's really talk about it. Who sits here and watches 82 games from every team? Facts. Heck, from, from your favorite team. From, from, okay, yeah. yep. I was going to say, I'm, I'm going to keep lowering the bar. Okay. Now, do you watch all 82 from your favorite team? Okay. 
Do you watch every playoff game? You might watch every playoff game from your favorite team. Fair enough. You might do that. But when during these playoffs, even when basketball in the first round was every single fucking day from one to nine. No, yeah. <laughs> no I'm, I'm being dead ass. No series got skipped. No fuck games. I, I guess I'm a casual now, Souls. Series got skipped. I was not watching Miami beat the dog shit Facts. out of Trey Did not watch I was a not single doing, game. Like, I didn't watch a <laughs> single game. I literally went on YouTube stream. I said, yo, I'm telling y'all now, Trey Young's alone. All Miami does is trap people. I'm not watching that series. Next thing I know, I pull up reference. Trey Young had four, like, shitter-ass games. Crazy, crazy. And if he was good... If he pushed it to five, six, or seven, I guess I'm watching game five, six, or seven. But I am not watching seven games of that bullshit. I, I just was not, bro. Yeah. Raptors Philly. Y'all, I don't give a fuck. I, I just did not give a fuck about Fred Van Fleet. <laughs> shout, shout out to the <laughs> Raptors. I didn't give a fuck about OG and Anobi and Fred and Scotty Barnes going up against Joel Embiid and James. I didn't. Now, if there was I, a game I seven, not care. I would have watched because it's Now, if there was home. a game seven, yeah. 3 0 comeback, I would have been there. Yeah. But once they went up 3 0, I damn well weren't watching. Watching that shit like bro that's y'all do yeah. not like it that bad bro even if we keep it basketball wise if you look at the march madness if i'm a fan of the tar heels if they lose in the oh, sweet 16 bro that's it season's over that's it that's, that's it. it so you, <laughs> you, so you have to watch that game but with the nba okay i, I saw game one it's a new series i want to see you know these two teams play I'll, I'll watch game one game two happens i'll just stay until game three like i don't i don't need to watch game two like, truly, and you can say that up until the elimination game, if I'm being truly honest. At least to me, that's my case for shortening the season. Cut down the meaningless games. And also, oh for you MLB God. fans, I don't know how y'all watch that sport for real. Oh, my goodness. 162 games, bro? Come I on, do bro. not care enough. I do not. I, I literally would not care enough. I, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm an MLB fan. I only watch postseason. I'm not watching 162 games. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Touch grass. <laughs> I, I'm going to just say it, bro. I'm sorry. Look, y'all get on niggas that watch anime. No, you're a nerd. Touch grass, bro. Holy fuck. Crazy thing about baseball, too, and I don't, I don't want to rag on baseball too much, <laughs> but there's literally, like, say, there's no time limit on each oh game. Oh, my God. It's nine innings, nigga. It's just that's nine innings. Y'all going back and forth? That's crazy. That's what I'm saying, yeah, That's crazy. Bro. Like, God, the, even, even the potential of having a 10-hour game, and that is one out of 162 of your season, is so fucking nasty, bro. That is so nasty. Season, you're going to mess with records. You're going to mess with numbers. You're going to mess with so much of our basketball because this Longevity group, would be are, the up. way that's that's it's handled point. right now, can't handle it. I'm off that. It, it, yeah, all right, let's perk angle life. You're just gonna do the I agree point. I'm gonna cut you off. No cap. <laughs> <laughs> but this this point this point that RJ just said of also the the shortening of seasons affecting records also does not make sense because there's been so many rules throughout history that have been changed yet we still do these fucking era comparisons. We still compare, I don't know, like Bill Russell to Ben Wallace, even though the game is completely different. Back when Bill Russell was playing, there was nine teams, 12 teams max in the league, 30 teams now. We compare Will Chamberlain and, and Bob Cousy to people, to, to a game, to an era that has a three-point line. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't bat an eye. Even something as small as the first round being a five-game series. You know what I'm saying? That, that used to be normal. That used to be normal. That fucks with people's records. That fucks with people's ability to come back from certain series because there's two less games you can play, you know? Even, even again, something as small as it, uh, I asked this to Sage the, the other day. Do y'all remember when the NBA Finals was 2-3-2? Two, two? Do you know how many series would have changed if, if the Finals was still 2-3-2? Two, two? Yeah, we don't, we, don't, we don't bat an eye at these things, so. Imagine 2016. They go, what, what was it, one up? Let's even say they went one up, and you asked LeBron to win three straight games at the Oracle. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Tw 2016, game, game five, game five would have been in Cleveland. Game six and seven would have been in Oracle. No. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. Oracle is a him. And, and for those who are going to say, hey, technically you still did it. You know what I'm saying? You won nah, two in a row. All right, whatever, bro. Whatever. I don't even want to get into it. Warriors in five, for the love of God, he he hinted that earlier. Sears used to go to five. Warriors in five meant they maxed out the series. Like, like it, was, it was a different thing. And so I, I'll, I'll concede that point to Souls. So what I was originally going to say is, um, well, yeah, you're right. You can't get uh, all-time points records and shit. I understand anybody that comments that, but no, nah, I agree. I agree. It was bullshit. So they talked about the same issue on first take, but this time with J.J. Redick and C.J. McCollum. Uh, do you think the NBA should consider shortening the regular season? No, they should not. Dang. 
Um, Damn, okay. I think when you consider all the things that players have available to them. Okay, RJ. Um, I think that the 82 game should be the, <laughs> the game. <laughs> um, you don't have to, you know, you can work around practice, your practice schedule. Again, I'm fully cognizant of the fact that both of you are far more qualified than me, you know, to take whatever position that you're taking. I'm just speaking from the standpoint of a guy that's covered the league for more than a quarter century and is talking to thousands of people throughout all of these years and what their positions are, I'll and I share it. I think that when you consider well, who am I head ass? Once hey, on, I'm bro. glad Come you on, picked bro. that up. That's why I did that joke, bro. He on, he does bro. that all the time. I don't I don't know. I know he wanted to say it, bro. I covered Allen Iverson, bro, bro. I'm Mr. ESPN, but you're 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 more qualified than me. I guess because you rode the bench, you got more credibility than me. Yeah, I, oh my God, <laughs> really on life was. he wanted to say that. <laughs> on life he wanted to say, yeah, you never held an MVP trophy. I'm Mr. ESPN, but okay, all right. I know he wanted to get toxic. Do it. And you consider, I don't want to get into all of it, but the first class travel, the fact that you don't have back to back to backs anymore, the fact that um, practicing, even though it's important, back to back to backs, you know, that was like as the coaches lockout and season. organizations manage <laughs> usage of a player, all of those things come into consideration. I definitely think in the business of sports, considering the money that's out there and the money that's there to be made, um, you can stick with what is. Um, and I think that it's important to point that out. And I also think it's important to point this out as well. And this is where I was going to yesterday. I want to make sure the audience understand that vast okay. majority of professional athletes, whether it's basketball, it's football, anything, are great, great people, great professionals. Here come the butt. Dedicated to their work, their craft. Stephen they put in the time. They make the sacrifices, the sacrifices that we can't even imagine. But we also got to pay attention to the fact that the actions of the few sometimes taint the many. And players religiously what? have mm. lamented that, particularly during collective bargaining negotiations, which Damn. obviously you've been a I'm part of, like you'll a be a Stephen part a. of even Just more in the future. Crazy. Okay? But the reality is, is that in the world of business, when you're sitting across the table from folks, you don't need but a few examples to make an argument against what you want to do. What? I can't. I, I, okay, here's what I'll say. In casual talk, that is just how people do things however bro if it's a bad argument call it out if bro is making the argument on a small sample size call it out it's that simple bro this argument that he's about to have where a couple of people already know he's gonna pre Kyrie or ben simmons this argument that yeah well this one guy might fuck it up for many that's true but nah not when you're that's such a crazy a that's such a crazy the, statement when you're making a rule for your league yeah now if you're talking about contract no no not even that no stop no what what the fuck no 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 Special case for a reason. You, it trends on Twitter for a reason when it happens. Because, like, what the fuck is happening? It's not a norm. But, Sage, I, I don't even want to take it there. But that argument, he said, when it comes to a lot of political issues, is that's such a bad argument. Come on, bro. If we really had to go there, we're not. Yeah, we're not. We're not. But you, you guys know what we're saying. That is a horrible argument. And when you consider the money that's being paid and the luxuries that people have available to them to maximize whatever the potential that they may have, to talk about shortening a basketball season, where obviously it's going to cost you some money, but more importantly, 82 games being too much, I just don't buy that right now. I'm not the one on the court playing, y'all are. And I certainly respect that, and that needs to be stated. But if it was good enough for generations to help build the sport, despite the argument that modifications and adjustments are made all the time, why all of a sudden is it just not a good thing to have 82 games now? So I, just What could Steph Curry do outside of shooting? All right, bro. God damn. Yeah, that's why I said I'm gonna look like a Stephen A. I don't hate Stephen A. But he just you just said why it more optimal play, more optimal scheduling, more optimal rules. It, it, yeah, that that's why. What is Shaq without dunking? All right, bro. Aside from dunking, what can Shaq do? Stupid. This entire conversation that really centers around two things. Okay. okay. And, and you brought up one of them, which is, of course, uh, the health of the players, players not being available to play. Would they be more available if there were 58 games, et cetera? You obviously brought up the money as well. I, I think what the money comes down to is, is really the most important part of this entire conversation and why this conversation started really four or five years ago. Is, yeah, and that's money trying to talk. figure out that's how it. to drum up 
attention for the regular season? How do we make the regular season matter more? Uh, they obviously added the, the play-in at the end of the regular season, which I think has been a great thing. So they're, they're, it's all about drumming up interest. So the idea of having a 58-game season with an in-season tournament, as long as there's no loss in revenue, you, you figure out creative ways to get there. There's an argument to be made. On your point about That's my argument. Th this, this uh, notion about players not being available, and, and, and Respectfully, uh, you're bringing up one or two examples, and I know exactly who you're talking oh, about. So it's Master the R2. Or Ben Simmons and Kyrie Irving. When you talk about two or three guys who really have taken advantage of these guaranteed contracts and, and not being available, I think it's, it's, it's a poor reflection on what we do as professionals. And Thank you. Vast Thank majority you. Of yeah. Call them out, bro. Small sample size is a small really sample size. understand that the vast majority of players act in the best interest of their teams, the best interest of their true. careers, and the best interest Pause of the Pause that league. before you go on. Pause okay. that before you go on. Oh. I totally agree with you. Okay. My yeah. reason for bringing that up is because when you're sitting across the table from each other, they'll bring up that argument even though they know that you're absolutely correct with what you yeah. said. When they want to get what they want to get, those few elements they could use to their advantage to get to what they want but they will bring that's up. Giving that's them all too I much mean by that. I'm not saying you're wrong, Stephen right. A. That's all I'm I saying. Guess the that's, issue that they I would, have but that's with, giving them too with much power. And, and it's, it, CJ does and you as well have with, issue some, with some of the comments that you made yesterday. And I, I don't remember specifically. I know the feeling that I got after your comments. Okay. And the feeling I got after your comments was just the idea of the spoiled, entire, entitled modern-day athlete. And I, I get, I get, you know, blasted all the time because of my koozie comments and the plumber's environment thing. Yeah. I have yeah, always said. <laughs> That every era of basketball. I've, I've heard yeah. all praise, no cap. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, JJ. You you kind of got certified for that shit. Maybe it's a sickness that we have and content creators have, bro. Do we only read negative shit? Because <laughs> JJ, you got a platform off of that one, boy. That you got cooked for the Giannis thing. Remember, that's what she got cooked for. But ever since then, nah, everybody love you, dog. You good. You good. And and what you said was facts. They they had side jobs. One of them probably was a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> it is just true. We pay homage to the greats and the old heads all the time, and we wouldn't have our league if it wasn't for people mm -hmm. like Bob Cousy and Wilt Chamberlain and and uh, Matt Chamberlain. Johnson and Dr. J. Like, I wish all of those guys now. could have been able to sign the contracts that we are able to sign. Okay. So that, that I just want to point. I want to put sure. that out there. The, the other point I wanted to make, though, about you know, and again, back to the entitled athlete thing, real quick. Like, I, I, I was around the league for 15 years. 99% mm. of guys work hard and if you don't you don't you don't make it you don't last 15 years you don't last what you're on your 10 you want to 10 yeah, yeah going to the 10 damn so damn. the only other point i wanted to make real quick and that's just the type of bat this goes back to the injury component the type of basketball that is played in the modern nba and the amount of uh possessions there are if you look back let's say the 90s right the cleveland cavaliers mm -hmm. in, in 1996 averaged 84 possessions per game right uh, the, the lowest in the league this year, I believe, was the Dallas Mavericks because Luka likes to control the pace, and that was around 93 possessions a game. But the vast okay. majority of teams, you're playing 100, 105 possessions a game. You're running all over the court. Analytically the too. based. The amount of action mm. that you're and, and, at, and low that you're JJ putting on your body. Look at like what stat nerds sound like. <laughs> that's when you cover, started covering the NBA. But he played. Well, that's the He's era Uber. I grew up. Mark Jackson brings the ball up, throws it to the winged Reggie Miller, throws it in the post to, post to Rick Smits, and everybody stands around. How many possessions like that do you see today? You don't see those possessions. That is true. There, there's more movement. You know what I'm saying? If you watch the Warriors, there's so much off-ball movment. It's very easy to just some some knee-to-knee -knee type contact to happen. Very, very easy. But also, he, he he brought up a really good argument with pace. Now, I would like to see if, you know, you could say the same in the 80s because I know the 80s has, like, a really high pace. So, if you know, if, if you see a graph where injuries went up in the 80s, and then went down in the 90s when pace slowed down. And in the 2000s, then it went back up when pace back uh, pace picked back up. And you could probably make some sort of correlation between pace and injuries. Those are solid arguments. It's a debate for a reason. There's there's really no right answer. There, nobody should be getting blasted, as JJ wants to use for um, their take here. It's on one hand, you do have the boomer take that uh, keep it keep it the old ways, man. And you got some take, you got some reason for it. But some people. 
claim to like basketball that much. But I'm definitely all for cutting it to 58 for the simpleton reason of, bro, y'all don't care. Y'all don't care enough, bro. Y'all don't want to see 82 games. What the fuck? Fake ass fans. I don't care. <laughs> it, it's all fraudulent. Like, we, we, we praise players. Oh, my God, praise. Oh, <laughs> don't get me started with the word praise. Holy fuck, bro. This expectation in the NBA community that you got to watch every game is crazy. I ain't watching all the games, bro. I'm sorry. I don't even think NFL fans do that, and they have a short season. So. They don't. We we don't. That's why they invented Red Zone. If y'all If you know what Red Zone is, it's literally what the NBA tried to do this season. It's literally every game's up on the screen. And even then, it's not every single game. They show the most important parts, a.k.a. when a team scored, get forced to turn over, or they're in the red zone. <laughs> like, like you, you know damn well you don't give a fuck about them dinking and dunking all the way up the field all 18 weeks. You care about it in big games. Steelers, Ravens, oh, yeah, I want to see how the fuck they did that. But Steelers, Jaguars, <laughs> yeah. And the Steelers ain't even that damn good. I'm just a fan. <laughs> like, what? Well, uh, JJ Reddick tried to not dunk on Stephen A. And so did CJ. But they actually did in this video right here. We'll catch you on the next one, man. Peace out. Peace.